Hello and welcome to another Maggie moment. Today I want to have a chat about movement and why it is so incredibly important in our children's lives. You might think, well, ugh, Maggie, of course they're moving. One of the things I've noticed in the parenting landscape is that there's lots and lots of products that are created to stop our children moving in a way that they're biologically wired to. And some of those things are, of course, our capsules, which of course keep children safe, um, prams, um, high chairs, um, rockers, um, walkers, and there's some other mysterious looking plastic chair that children are being put into before they can sit up. Now they're there for actual parents' convenience as well as to keep children safe. I want to talk to you about why movement's so incredibly important and how simple it is. When our babies are little, and that's under the first 12 months of life, they actually need to be rocked a lot, swayed and rocked. It's really interesting that there used to be a rocking chair in most nurseries in the olden days, although I know that there's a new swing back to seeing that's actually a really helpful thing. It is that rocking helps to calm what we call the vagus nerve in the brain, which is about calmness. And there, are, there is some significant research suggesting that maybe the increasing levels in anxiety in today's children are that that little nerve hasn't been soothed enough. So once again, if you get to see a distressed baby being picked up by a parent, and I know dads now can do it as good as mums, those hips get moving. I want you to know that's incredibly important. And sometimes we're exhausted because it's two o'clock in the morning. Always go to soothing children with some movement because there's something else going on in the brain. Second thing is that our kids are actually meant to be doing movements that inhibit primitive reflexes. And some of the most significant ones are pushing backwards on their tummies. And that's one of those things that with our um, change of sleeping habits due to SIDS, which is incredibly important, sometimes we forget to leave our babies on the floor to do some movements that they actually know they have to do. And then of course, we now live in a world where our children are surrounded by fantastically exciting, interesting forms of technology that keep them terribly passive. So we have got some concerns that without enough movement and we need vigorous movement, we need um, exploratory movement, we need movement playing with other people, then maybe our brain is being wired differently. And some of our children aren't building self-regulation, which I've talked about in another blog. So the sorts of things to keep our kids, once again, movement, that's what play's about, but it's also something to do with moving the whole body. Um, when you talk to some of the allied health professionals, they're actually finding today's children turning up in classrooms with significant delays developmentally, often sensory. And, and one of the one is, is where is my body in relation to the world? So children who don't play in a real world enough can have difficulty knowing where their body finishes. Doesn't that sound really weird? So once again, we can see these children touching the edge of tables, sometimes trying to work out where their body finishes. So I just want to encourage you to really do everything you can to keep your kids moving, keep them on the floor, keep them outside, because in those early years, movement isn't going to just make them smarter, it's going to make them healthier on all levels. And that's that for now. <laughs>